you're probably wondering how we got here. For that, we need to rewind a few hours. We started off the night in Bel Air at Il Segreto with some friends. It may have been a pricey restaurant, but don't tell Matt and myself that. We have the maturity of 12 year olds. <laughs> From there we get the number one Uber driver in LA to drive us to the club. How we made it there in one piece though is beyond me. At the club we get spoiled with our first ever bottle service with our name on it, pretty surreal. And it got the attention of a few vlog watchers who came up to us and said hi after. What's up you guys, welcome back to another video here at the house of the gang. We're here with all the members of the gang, their friends, and we got Marty over here from the Tiki home game. It's gonna be a fun one. We're in for 300 bucks, it's a friendly one too, but as always, if you're new, drop a like, subscribe, and let's get into the hands, let's go. The game is one two, we're in for $300, and now let's meet the guys. First hand of the night, I look down at pocket six from the hijack. I open it up to $15 and Gil, my editor, he three bets me to $45. He knows how I play. He's literally seen every one of my hands because it's his job to do so. So yeah, we're gonna proceed with some caution here when we're going heads up out of position to a flop against him, which comes ace nine four with two spades. I have pocket sixes, I have a spade in my hand, but I decide to check it over to Gil and he fires out into me for $25. Not gonna be folding just yet. I'm gonna float him one time and see what the turn card brings in. So that's what we do when the turn comes the king of diamonds. Sticking to the plan and checking it over to Gil, let's see if he bets or checks now. And he decides to check behind, bringing in the river, which comes the deuce of spades. It completes the front door flush draw, so I consider going for a bluff. But in the end, I decide to check it over to him with my showdown value. And when he checks behind and I turn over my hand, he tables the ladies, pocket queen. So that's going to do it. Nice hand gill for third pair, $140 headed your way. Next hand, I look down at the bullets in early position with 150 in my stack. I actually think I'm the straddle, so I put in $4, but I'm not, so I end up saying blind raise. That's what it stands as, and Gordy raises me up to $15 on my left. The big blind and the straddle both call. When the action comes back around to me, obviously I'm gonna be raising. I like a large sizing here, but I actually decide on a smaller one to $55. Probably should be larger, around 75 bucks. But either way though, let's see if we get some action. We do in fact get some action. Gordy rips his entire stack in for $180. And as if I was ever folding in this spot, I put in a stack of red chips and immediately table the bullets. He shows pocket jack, so he's gonna need one of the two remaining jacks in the deck to come on this board. Let's see if he can get it. The flop comes 8-8 eight, eight, deuce rainbow. Not a great board for him. The turn comes the deuce of hearts followed by the eight of spades. We end up with a boat and that's going to do it. We're taking down that $330 pot. I end up adding on for an additional $100. I look down at this next hand on the button, king jack of hearts. The low jack who goes by Joey opens it up to $12. And I put in the call, probably should just be raising here, but either way, Gil in the big blind decides to put in the raise to $50. Joey gets out of the way and the action's back over to me. I'll have position on Gil the entire rest of the way. So I decide to put in the call. It might be a little bit loose and I played the hand kind of weird, just calling the $12 raise, now calling this $50. But either way, we're here to have some fun. I'm off to the flop, which comes eight, seven, deuce, rainbow. Not a lot of fun. But when Gil checks it over to me, some thoughts go through my head. He could be doing this with a hand like ace-king, king-queen, ace-queen, all of which have me beat. So if I stab on this flop, he might just fold his cards and we would win. But being in position, I decide to take the free card and see what he does on the turn. When the turn comes the six of clubs, the action's on him once again, and he decides to check it over to me for a second time. Now I decide to put the plan into action. When he checks to me twice, 
it's likely he's gonna have an ace king king queen type of hand so for that reason i decided to stab out here for forty dollars i probably should be going a little bit larger putting those hands in a tough spot either way though he puts in the call and we're off to the river which gives me a pair it comes the king of spades when he checks to me for a third time, now we're betting for value. I grab a little bit of chips, toss it into the middle at $75. He checks his cards one more time before putting in the call. I table my hand, he looks at his cards once again and smiles. Mucks his cards and that means that $350 pot is being shipped my way. Sorry Gil. <laughs> on to the next one, we're on the button with King 10 offsuit and Joey opens it up to eight bucks. Marty is on my right and he puts in the call for eight bucks. I call as well, Gil calls, and one other player does as well. We're going off to a flop extremely multi-way here, which comes 986 rainbow. When the flop checks over to me, I decide to stab for $15, which I honestly have no idea why I did. I have a gutter to a straight and two over cards, but uh, when I put in the 15 bucks, Joey and Marty both put in the call. 45 more dollars going into the middle and we're off to the turn, which comes the four of spades. Joey checks it over to Marty who checks it over to me. Am I gonna stab one more time or am I gonna check behind and get that free card? No, I decide to stick to the story that I have two pair, maybe a set or a flop straight and I bet out for $40. Joey gets out of the way, few, one out of the two done. Let's see if Marty can put in the fold. No, he does not. He puts in the call, which we didn't wanna see. That brings us to a river card, which comes a 10 of clubs. Are we gonna get bailed out on this river once again? Let's see if Marty checks it over to me. He actually does not. He bets out into me for $150. Definitely a weird line calling the flop and turn and then leading on the river, but it brings a four liner to a seven having a straight. There's also a lot of two pair combinations. So I think in the end, a fold is probably the right move. Considering there aren't any front door flush draws that busted, I know the spades got picked up on the turn. I don't really know if he's gonna have that and just donk out on the river. So I decide to muck my cards and because it's a home game and Marty wants to show the bluff, he does queen deuce of spades, making Israeli Ron proud, but not making me pretty happy. He's taking down that pot with that $150 bluff. Man, I should have tossed in one chip. I'm gonna stop folding this guy. I Stand up game. Yeah, 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 yeah. How much is it for, Gil? Ten dollars. Ten American pesos. Ten whole dollars, oh with the stand-up game in full effect, I look down at King Jack offsuit from the small blind. Joey in late position decides to raise it up to $20, and I end up putting in the call, leading us heads up to a flop, which comes Queen Jack 8 with two spades. I check it over to Joey, who decides to take the free card and check behind, bringing in the deuce of hearts on the turn. I decide to check over to him on the turn once again. He might stab here, considering we're playing the stand-up game. If he gets me to fold, he's gonna be able to sit down, which is extremely valuable you know you don't have to pay out ten dollars to every player at the table but I didn't check two streets with a pair to not call this $25 bet that's what I decided to do I put in the call and that leads us to the four of clubs on the river I check it over to Joey once again let's see if he'll go for a bluff he does not he checks behind that means I probably have the best hand which I do when I table my hand he mucks his we're taking down that $90 pot but more importantly I finally get to sit down On to the next one, I look down at Ace-10 offsuit from the cutoff. I raise it up to $15 and Billy and Marty both put in the call. We're going three ways to the flop, which comes Jack-10-8 rainbow. Billy checks it over to Marty who checks it over to me. I'm in position and I have a pair, but it's multi-way. So I decided to take the free card and check behind, bringing in the six of spades. When they check it over to me for a second time, I take a free card once again. The six of spades really doesn't change too much, but at the same time, when I bet, I'm probably only gonna get called by better. I take that free card and we see the six of diamonds on the river. Billy now bets out for $50 and when Marty snap mucks, the action's on me. I played this hand pretty passively and I still have a pair in my hand. Billy hasn't played too many hands at the table, but at the same time, everyone in this hand looks pretty weak, so I wouldn't blame him for stabbing for $50. I end up making the call. If he has me beat, he's gonna have to show me. He does not though. He turns over five deuce off suit. So yeah, my pair of tens is good enough to win that pot. Ship it to Papa. 
few more to go. This one I looked down at Ace-5 offsuit from the straddle. Billy raises it up to $20 from the cutoff and Marty puts in the call. I put in the call as well that leads us three ways to the flop which comes king, king, deuce. Marty checks it over to me and just having ace high, I decide to check it over to Billy. Let's see if he'll decide to stab on this board, which he does not. He checks behind and that brings in the jack of clubs. When Marty checks to me for a second time, I think about checking, but actually when Billy checks on the flop, I don't really think he's going to have too many kings. He'd probably bet that for a small sizing on the flop. And given the fact Marty has checked two streets, I decided to take up the betting lead and see what I would do with any king. I decided to bet out for $15, which is pretty small. I probably would prefer like 30 to 40 bucks. Either way though, Billy puts in the call and Marty gets out of the way. We get one of the opponents to fold, hoping we can improve on the river or just bluff and get him to fold. The seven of clubs is an interesting card because it brings in the backdoor club draw. But at the same time, if I bet here, he's probably just gonna call me with any jack. I decide to slow down and maybe get to a showdown and win with my ace high. When he checks behind, I table my hand and it looks like he wanted to fire a bet there on the river and he's pretty mad at himself. We're gonna scoop that $90 pot with ace high. Looks like I got a little bit of value on that turn, huh Billy? Next hand, ace king of spades from the button. Marty puts on the $32 straddle. Yes, we got the four, eight, 16 and Marty on the 32. I'm on the button and I decide to raise it up to $75. The big blind and Marty from the cutoff both put in the call and that leads us three ways to a flop. What might be the largest pot of the night? The flop comes 10, eight, six with two spades and the big blind checks it over to Marty. Marty's smart enough not to lead into the pre-flop razor, which is I, and he checks it over to me. Having two spades is pretty nice. We could also improve with any ace or king on the turn. However, this board is definitely gonna favor the big blind and Marty way more than it is me. So I decided to take the free card and check behind, bringing in the seven of clubs on the turn. Richard in the big blind decides to bet out for $50 and Marty puts in the call. Actions on me, I could be raising, although I'm just gonna get called by any straight or set. So I think it's better just to put in the 50 bucks and hopefully improve on the river. That's what I decide to do and come on dealer one time. Let's do it. It comes a jack of spades. Bang, we rivered the flush. The board ultimately isn't paired. There's a ton of things going on out there, but now the big blind decides to slow down and check it over to me. Well, actually he doesn't check it over to me. He checks it over to Marty. He's in between us two. And Marty says, don't forget about me. He bets out for $200. Music to my ears. I can't be beating this hand. If you look at the board, there's not even a possible straight flush. So having the ace of spades in my hand is the nuts. $200 is the price of poker and obviously I have to raise. I'm gonna go all in, which is basically $450 effective. The big blind gets out of the way and Marty snap folds, showing his cards, 5-3 offsuit. He tried to get that one through. I appreciate the effort, Marty. But at the end of the day, the best hand wins, which is my hand, and that $575 pot is coming my way. You can see it on the vlog. I need all the views I can get. I like seeing it. I have Low pair? I have nine spades, man. Up here? You'll see on the log. <laughs> Up $700, we're going on to the last hand of the night. I look down at pocket nines from the cutoff. Few limps over to Marty on my right who bumps it up to $20. I decide to put in the call and three other players do as well. A great flop for me would be a nine on it and that's what we get, it comes nine, eight, three, bang, we flop top set. Even better is when Marty bets out into me for $60. Now I could be just putting in the call, but at the same time, there's a lot of draws out there. Seven, six, 10 jack, or any two clubs have a draw. When Marty bets out for $60, I wanna bump the pot up now. So I decided to three bet him to $155, which might be a little bit large. I probably could just go 125, but uh, he doesn't think it's too large. He actually wants to play for his entire stack and he rips it all in for $370. To which I obviously snap call because I have top set, which is the nuts on this flop. Sure, it could change by the turn of the river, but I'm gonna get my money in good at the moment. I immediately show my hand and Marty laughs. We're gonna run it once. It comes the six of diamonds followed by the queen of spades. Marty shows the nine of diamonds before mucking. And that means we are gonna take down that $840 pot to end the night. 
With that last hand in the books, we rack up our chips. I want to give a huge shout out to Gil and the gang for throwing this game together last minute. I had a blast playing with everybody. I can't wait to be back. All right, you guys, that wraps up that one-two session with my buddies, the gang and Marty, their dad, their whole family. It was a bunch of fun. I ended up booking a profit of 1113, 1113. Not a bad night, had a bunch of fun. Hope you guys enjoyed that vlog. But as you can see, I'm here at The Hustler, which means the next video, if you guys subscribe or if you're not already, please drop a subscribe. I'm playing on Hustler Live. Max Payne Monday in about two hours from right now when I'm filming this. Subscribe if you want to see that video. It's a 10, 20, 40 game. I'm going to be in for $7,000. Let's freaking go. Appreciate all the support. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.